So I've been wanting to do some redesigns in the shop for quite a while now and finally it honestly got to the point where I was like I am just too crowded and I have to clean everything out and get rid of stuff and redesign this place to be an actual good shop because I just got so many things. I started a few years ago as a carpenter uh, just on the side just doing some stuff and you know I'd add this tool and I'd add this tool and this and so it just got really cluttered. Now this is ultimately going to be a multi-part build. I um, want to put in some work tables and actually back here in the back I want to put in a storage room. That will be like an enclosed space inside of this shed. And then we've got the whole middle aisle and other side of the shed. But we will visit those throughout the year. I'm not redoing all of them right now. For today we're definitely going to be focusing on this front area where I want to put up the tables. Um, just make some nice workspace so that I can have a dedicated spot for the lapidary equipment that I just got in and a nice large work spot for me to refinish boxes or work on smaller crafting projects coming up for the expos we have in February although I don't know when this will be airing um, we I need some space to work on a lot of the crafts with bones and other stones and stuff like that so I wanted to take this time redo the shed so that I can really have some good spots to work on because I need some more inside working space since it's going to be rainy, rainy the next few months. Now this shed was originally my grandfather's and it was just used for a lot of different storage stuff. Uh, there was a lot more fishing stuff but I sort of kept the, the best rods and I'm actually going to move them. For now they'll be back where we're going to make the storage area but I'm definitely going to keep this pegboard. Now I'm going to take it down and redesign it. Re I'm actually probably going to like cut it in half, move it over, etc. Um, but I really like the pegboard feature, so we're going to use that again. And we'll probably come down, like I said, to about here, and we'll do a small build out of a wall, just to you know, frame up a wall, so that I can have some shelves on the outside of that wall on the end of this table. Now I've got a kind of loose plan for how everything's going to go, but honestly we're just going to get the tables up, build that, and then we'll see exactly how we'll customize each space, whether it be the sort of workstation or the lapidary station, and we'll see what, uh, what we might want to do with our storage underneath. But first step is getting all this down, pulling the pegboard down for now so that we can reposition it, maybe cut it so that it's better suited for what we need, and getting our 2x4s up on the wall Drilling into these bits so that we got something to be the back brace of the table. Now, I think it's my history of uh, being in art school, but the way I go about projects, I usually do a lot of stuff up front. So what I've done is for the basic structure, I've gone ahead and measured out and cut out all the boards the right size. And now I'm about to go through and drill our pocket holes. Um, if you haven't ever worked with a pocket hole driller, um, I'll show you that. It's a pretty cool process. You can pick up this little thing at most of your big box hardware stores. Um, and they have bigger rigs. This is just a single one. So we'll go over how to use this. But like I said, as you can see, I've got all my boards measured out. I'm going to drill the holes in the ones that I need. And then we'll just sort of have to go through and assemble it. So... Let's drill our holes and then we'll start getting our build on. A pocket hole driller basically just drills a certain type of pilot hole. Um, with this drill bit uh, and this guide, which you can get, like I said, at your local big box hardware store. And um, you can also get like a setup where there's four or two. I just have the single one so you basically clamp it on as needed to whatever piece and then you just drill and as you can see there is a little hole down in there and so that's where the nail will go. So this lets you, you know, hide. It makes sure that your nails get in flush and it creates just a different uh, slight angle to it. So just to demonstrate how these pocket holes work, we've got some simple two inch wood screws. We're gonna put this together with, as you can see, the pocket is drilled here and you just 
fit the boards together or you know whatever you're drilling put it together and this provides a little lead and oh, I need a better angle I need so my bit is too stripped let me replace that real quick all right all right and that makes it sturdy it's just a way to sort of hide the nails better and that way you don't have to drill through long ways so let's finish getting this frame together and then we can get some more stuff up. Now, basically we're gonna assemble the armature of the line of tables. I've got all of my wood pre-cut. I've got my pocket holes drilled on most of the pieces. I've already faceted and assembled the pocket holes and I've already got up one wall. Now this is gonna be the end cap for this work area that we're doing, and it'll also serve as one of the walls in phase two of the build, which will be the enclosed room. So next, we just gotta get everything assembled, and then we'll go and put the countertops on. I went with a bit of a tiered system. As you'll see as I build, this first section is gonna be higher than these next sections because this is sort of going to be the lapidary area, whereas this is going to be the more general crafting area. So eventually I'll put in uh, all the saws for the cutting, both of our cutting stations right here, some grind, the grinding wheel, and then eventually down the road we'll get to some electroplating. So I wanted to make sure there was enough space in this area. And then other things like some wooden boxes or especially the bones that I've got coming up and we're going to be making for the expo here in February. I'm definitely going to be doing it in this area. So let's get to assembling this pieces and then we're going to call it a night and then in the morning we will put on the countertops and start to assemble some of the shelving underneath. So we've assembled all of our work tables, got the 2x4 armatures out, I started to put some tabletops on, as you can see I added a shelf down here, I'll probably end up adding another shelf down here, but just a little walkthrough of what we've got so far. This first station is basically going to sort of be like the primary intake station or what I'm working on at the moment. Um, since we've got those expos coming up soon, I'm about to load all this up with bones. I've already got wheel cover soon. Some runes, I'm making some runes out of rib bones. So that'll be an upcoming tutorial because I definitely want to get some more sets of those made. And so I've got a rolling thing. I'll slide under there and store some more bones. And then this will sort of be another sort of like raw material station. Uh, definitely probably where I'll keep some of my rocks, but this is also some extra work area. Um, and probably some of my scrap metal down the road, just like some extra stuff. I plan on putting some shelves up here. Of course, all of this wall is going to be pegboard or uh, maybe some plywood up, uh, but just so that we can have some vertical space, we're going to add that next. Um, and we'll just sort of fill out how it goes. I'm going to try to leave things a little bare right now so that if I need something in the future that I don't install in this build, I don't have to rip something out. 
uh, I just might leave a space blank so that it doesn't get converted into something that I wish it was something else later. Now, the feature I'm really excited about is this rock cutting station down here, or where the cutting station will primarily be. Um, like I said, I'm going to add another shelf down here, and I'm going to end up storing all of these tools down here. The lap saw, the grinding table, and this tumbler. Now, this tumbler I've had, I got from a friend a while ago, and I really I hadn't even pulled it out of the box. Don't know much about it, so eventually we'll go through some of that too. Um, it was my plan to go through some of that <clears throat> sort of first, but I ended up getting these this equipment. And as you see, I've stored my other cutting stuff down there. So what I like about this is this has an old... Uh, this was part of an entertainment system, and we just sort of pulled it apart. We found it, we pulled it apart, and I saved a few pieces. I really liked this sliding uh, tray. You know, of course, the TV would sit on there, and I guess you'd slide it out to plug everything up back in the day when everything wasn't wireless. But it's nice now because you know I can take whatever machine I'm working on and put it on there. And, you know, if needed to, I can slide it out, have a little more area to work. And when I'm done, I can just store the machines back under the table. And again, we'll put some shelves over here and some tools up there. Um, let's just get the walls up and then see what we're going to put where. two by fours for the back wall up and I've started to put a few things on the pegboard. I wanted to put plywood here because I'm actually going to attach shelving here uh, because this station is going to hold our boxes with some of our raw rocks in them and those can get kind of big. So I put extra two by four backing behind this piece of plywood and then I drilled pocket holes and I'm going to put up three shelves. I drilled pocket holes in all the shelves so that we can attach the shelves, drill through the plywood into the 2x4 behind there for extra anchor, and then on these pieces that are going to go in between the shelves, I've also got pocket holes in them so that they can be extra security and then we'll fasten the boards, you know, we'll fasten them together. So it's just a, a lot of well reinforced shelving to go in here just because they're going to hold some heavy stuff. So let's put those up. first stage of the build. I've got all of my tables set up, some shelves underneath where I need them, my tools for all of my lapidary uh, related projects I've got hanging above this station where I'll do my lapidary work. I've got this set up for my raw stones graded out by size and of course I'll change some stuff uh, you know depending on what I'm working on at the time. And the only thing I haven't finished so far is I'm going to get some more pegboard to put over the station where I'm working on the bones and some of my nature stuff so that I can put the tools that are more specific to that stuff in that section. So, like I said, we'll revisit this. I'm going to do some more stuff on the other side of the shop and a storage room back there. 
So we'll be back probably in a few weeks to see the other parts of the build, but I'm really happy with how this went. All in all, I spent less than $200. Now, I saved big by having some pieces, you know, scavenging from the roadside for this uh, old countertop and cutting it down and some other pieces here and there. I used a lot of scrap wood because I'm cleaning out the shop, but even if you didn't have some of that stuff, again, I probably used about 15 two by fours and really one or two pieces of plywood, one or two pegboards would cover it. So still your that screws everything, you're only talking about $200 uh, for this build. So real happy with how things turned out and we'll see you next time. Well, we're definitely gonna end each episode with like 15 seconds of goats. Yeah, that's <laughs>